Today, I'm in Naperville, Illinois with Jaina Larkin, who's always considered herself a businesswoman. Her background includes working in sales for WABC TV in New York, to designing and building a retail center. And while she found great success in these areas, she never thought that caregiving would be where she would find her true fulfillment. I am Tai Chi. At 19, I was a superstar and I was lost inside. I left it all behind, switched continents and started all over. Years later, I found myself lost again, this time in the American dream. This is a story about awakening, about living the life you were created for, about going inward and discovering the joyous and purposeful person you and I are both meant to be. This is Waking Up in America. I'm here with a good friend of mine, Jana Larkin, and I want to talk to you about, you know, that time that comes in our lives when, when, uh, when we realize that hmm, we're looking at our parents and realize the years that we have together are, are growing fewer and the time together is shorter. And so we are, we willingly make that shift to make more time to spend with them or at least be present in the time that we get to spend with them. Sometimes we're too afraid to face that the end is imminent because it also you know, scares us to think about our own mortality and examine our own life. That's why I wanted to talk about with my, uh, my friend Jana who offered to share her wonderful experience about um, taking care of aging parents. Thanks mm -hmm. so much, Jana. You're so Thank welcome. You. I worked for WABC TV for a few years. I had a short but very rewarding career where I met Regis, your friend, and That's Kathy nice. Lee. And Isn't that a wonderful connection? I know, oh my gosh. <laughs> and we've been coming yeah. uh, to, to uh, Jana's house. Every time we are in the area, we, we, we stay with yeah. you. So yeah, yeah. what a crazy, I know. small world. <laughs> it is, it really is. Um, primarily, I raised our kids. Bob, I think I said financial advisor, 31 years. Um, and there just came a time in uh, our life when Bob's mother um, had Alzheimer's disease was cared for by her son, Dave, and his wife for two years in Larry and Rosemary's home. Uh, but then Rosemary really required um, some more care. And so they had her in a nursing home out east, but it, didn't, it wasn't a good fit. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, a friend of mine, her mother was in a nursing home here, and I'd heard for years what a great place this was. And so kind of had these little, um, little ideas already coming up in my mind that maybe that would be a great place for Rosemary. And, yeah, um, amazing how that works, isn't yeah, it? And yeah. So let's, uh, let's look at that footage from that uh, sure. time when we shared in the summer. My mom and dad were really terrific parents, raised eight of us, and uh, were a great example of uh, a man and a woman that were really in love. And so to see my brothers and sisters uh, we all get along uh, with all our spouses. Um, it's a big tribute to my mom and dad. To uh, be willing to take care of them is, is it's a privilege. Well, what I hear you say is that there's tremendous amount of personal growth and healing that, that goes into when you are, you know, like I say, you, you, the man who taught you how to drive, you were taking his keys away. That's, that, 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 is, that is a very huge, complex, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, issue of dealing with all these things mm -hmm. and, and with the relationship with your father to right. care about. We, we put certain aspects of our life on hold, you could argue that, but we've enriched our lives in so, other so ways. Many ways. And so, yeah. Um, I guess what we could say is we embraced this opportunity eventually. Um, it really became a passion for us. We fell in love with the elderly people that we met oh at St. Patrick's. Yeah. We um, have had some very tender moments with his mom and his dad that we never would have had if we hadn't really... Welcomed um, them here. Yes. For me, I think um, when Larry and I would visit the nursing home and visit his wife, I fell in love with the old people there. I really fell in love with them um, in a way that I didn't expect. Um, and then they would be thanking me for bringing my father-in-law and saying, oh, you're such a great daughter-in-law. And, and I'm thinking, it's really not me. Um, I don't know, I just, I know what it is. I think that it was 
Larry and Rosemary who set the tone of love in the family. My mom and dad, 13 years ago, had both of their mothers in their home, so the example was set for me. And I guess it just became intuitive to do it. And when I, I was at the nursing home and I was with all these lovely people, I was filled up with um, gratitude for the opportunity to be there. And I mm. never knew that I loved old people. I don't know if there's a better way of saying it, but I really do. And I have a much greater appreciation for what they can teach us about loyalty, about commitment in marriage. Larry and Rosemary would have been married 65 years three days ago. And um, that's huge. And he was committed to her to the very last day. Mm -hmm. And taught us how to care for someone you really love. Jana, when you said um, in that, at that time when we were sharing in the summer that it wasn't you, I felt it was all you. Yeah. Perhaps it was a part of you that you hadn't, that you weren't aware of. It was me. And I think it was a process, a process for me to figure out. Um, and I think it first started to come to me when I realized the fulfillment that I was receiving from this task that had come into my life. Mm -hmm, that you didn't ask I, for. Right. I mean, I did. I volunteered. But, right, right. But, you know, but it's not like you, you were planning on it. And, you know, right. you, you come from, I mean, you started out as a, you're, and you're a very talented as a businesswoman. And, I mean, everything that you do, when well, first time I met you, you were organizing Advent tea for the yeah. ladies. and. I mean, with such excellence, and you do run a business as yeah. well, mm -hmm. and you raised a family, and you run your household with really right. with great skill. Well, you make me sound really pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> That's what you are. Who you are? Absolutely. So, but you know, so so you know, you couldn't have planned this as part of your life. No, I didn't. And um, I think what I I think with time, and um, I, I realized that I thought of myself as a businesswoman mm -hmm. in sales and marketing. My father owned his own business and I always admired his line of work. My mother was a nurse, very nurturing. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I wasn't able to go watch her in surgery. So I think maybe part of me thought, well, I couldn't relate to that necessarily, that vocation. So I started thinking, okay, well, then I must be meant for the business world. And so I started pursuing that. And, and I've, I've had some great experiences, as I did with uh, WABC TV. You have this path, but then it doesn't necessarily end up being as gratifying as you think. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's not really your skill set as much as something else. And then, um, yeah, or maybe it is a part of it is, you know, we project the life we think we want to live or what we think it, we want it to look like. Yes. Yes. Right. And I found out differently that what's really fulfilling for me is really being um, nurturing, receiving nurturing, giving nurturing. I don't know exactly uh, I, how to I say it. Every time we come visit yeah. you, you're just so... Uh, uh, I mean, such a great host, and not host as in as in role, just who you are. You know, you, you play with my kids, and you have that they have they love you so much because that is a part of who you are. And that Mr. Larry helped you discover, discover that. Yes, he did. Just or like, just the whole situation. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to discover who I am as a person, and what is really my life is supposed to be about. And, and embrace it. Absolutely. Embrace it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so, so how do you, so, um, you know, you shared with me um, Mr. Larkin's favorite songs, and there I went back home and I found the song, and I will, I will sing it for you. And as I was doing the song a few days later, you, 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 you uh, send a notice out that Mr. Lar uh, Larkin passed away. Mm -hmm. So how do you, what, what happened then? So you had your kids and then they went off to college. Mm -hmm. Right in their transition, there was Mr. Larkin. Mm -hmm. And now your house is quiet. Mm -hmm. Very, very quiet. Um, well, I'm not rushing into anything, 
But what I'm doing is spending more time reflecting on what I've learned while doing the caregiving. Um, and, you know, I have to say, I wasn't, you know, the only one caregiving. His si Bob's siblings, there are seven sure. of them, came out very regularly, yes. and they were a huge support. And you also shared that you did ask for help from the community. and Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And, and you know what that does? It just connects you even more mm. with your, your sister-in-laws, brother-in-laws, your, your community at large, that when they come and they help you, and then, then and now I'm more in tune to helping them when I see somebody who's got an aging mm -hmm. parent. Maybe I can call them and say, do you need a night off? Let me come and sit with yes. your, your parents and play cards or whatever. Yes, that is such a beautiful, you know, uh, giving and receiving constantly, the flow of giving and receiving. But I, I, I really, you know, want to, I'm really interested know, in this quiet time, this Jana now, Having, you know, being afraid to take the silence and look inside and do some hard examination, self examination, and come up with what do you come up with? Well, I'm still coming up with that business mm -hmm. side of me. Oh, good. I am. <laughs> and that's fun. I mean, there's a few things I'd like to, to try. Absolutely. You know, be invested in. But um, I'm taking more personal time to reflect how can I give to the world in a way that is. Um, beneficial to the world, but true to myself and fulfilling to myself. Because it's not about just give, 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 because you don't want to burn out. So you really, I think, we don't spend enough time in reflection. Mm -hmm. So one of my goals this year is to spend, you know, if I can, an hour a day just in quiet, reflecting on, you know, absolutely I the mean, insides inside of myself. Absolutely. And all the experts, I mean, there's so much written about it and the benefits mm -hmm. of it. Um, mm -hmm. Not just from the spiritual teachers, but from even like business experts and business uh, coaches. Well, yeah. and I, yeah. I did, I tell you, when we were in Colombia this summer for our Colombian daughter's wedding, yes. there's this um, museum and attached it was a parking garage. And in the courtyard, there was a patio of silence. Courtyard of the museum? Yes. And there was a patio of silence. And I thought about that and I thought, we need some of those in America where we can sit down. Okay, wait, so you're saying just, it's, a, it's a public space? Yes. With a courtyard of silence. There was a sign, patio of silence in Spanish. And I was like, wow, people just can go there. And it was in, kind of enclosed. And you can go and just sit, but they don't, their expect, the expectation is no, no chit chat, no, you know, just reflect and be silent. If we all did that. How, what we would learn about ourselves. I know, I know, I know, I know. I always say, you know, like, how can we calm the noises and the voices and expectations? Because everything comes with our expectations and perceptions, everything that we struggle with. Right. And that prevents us from really waking up to the life that we're created for. You know, often it seems that this waking up moment, um, the, the stories that we read about people who shifted their lives, their waking up moments were loud, were very, you know, were true wake up calls. Maybe it was an illness or addiction or death in family, or loss of someone uh, dear. And I had quite a few guests that, you know, experienced that. When it's harder is when, you know, there's a series of they're not even wake up calls, they're like whispers, right? Yes. And if we, can, if we can be aware of them and then make the shifts every day, because you know, life is not about this one shift and then everything is perfect, right? And well, it reminds me of the days when I would take Larry and our schedule, our, our routine was to go to mass at St. Patrick's residence every morning first. And oh. Rosemarie would be in the quiet room, they'd have her there because there's a chapel attached to the nursing home, oh. and we would go to Mass every day. Well, sometimes those Masses were funerals. Mm -hmm. Many times they were yes. funerals. And Mr. Larkin wanted to stay for them. He enjoyed, even if he didn't know who had passed, right. he enjoyed hearing what legacy they left. And it was so beautiful for me to watch him listen to the eulogies. And then mm -hmm. I realized I was being impacted by what are they saying about these people? How Am I happy with what I'm doing in my life? Am I deserving of some of the things that are being said? And not that I'm you know, concerned about what people say about me, but I want to be a real authentic person 
who leaves a beautiful legacy of connection or whatever it might be. Yeah, I used to. I, I did a lot of uh, singing at at um, uh, memorial services and funeral uh, funerals, and you know, I, I I thought so many times nobody ever mentions you know the bank account or or even like exactly. the, the career accomplishments. You know, they they go over those really fast. If okay, so he was, but it's more about the time that they spent together and the cookies they baked and you know the love and caring and yeah it makes you reevaluate your life and maybe perhaps when you you know look at someone that you don't know you're not so overwhelmed with your emotions of, correct you know so you can you, ha- you it is it serves as a time to reflect on your one one more, more thought um, mr larkins uh, uh, one of his favorite songs you shared with me was if i had a life to live over and at the end when when uh, when he passed what would what do you think what do you think well I, he I think he lived an incredibly honorable life and we're all real hard on ourselves so I think he would have been kind of hard on himself but he were, he lived a very honorable life and I know that because my husband received so many beautiful letters after Larry passed from the sales managers from Pfizer Pharmaceuticals that Larry was um, in charge of. Mm. Larry retired over 30 years ago. And we received so many beautiful notes saying how much Larry and Rosemary meant to this couple or that couple. So that really showed me, and I always knew it, but it was a real testament to the life he and Rosemary lived. Would he have done anything differently? I think we all would do things differently. (laughs) But um, I think he would be very satisfied. He really devoted his life to his wife, his faith, his eight children, and his job. So his life, in a way, and the experience that you have is a gift for you to um, have shifted and to have said, okay, if I... Not if I had my life to live over, but from this point on, I have this opportunity, this chance to live my life, not over, but from that moment on, the way, mm-hmm. the way you're, you're, you're mm-hmm. meant to live. Mm-hmm. I'm much more present in my own life with my spouse, hopefully with my children. I think just being the best person that I can be, more giving. I still go back to St. Patrick's. Bob and I were there yesterday. And we spent two hours after Mass just visiting with the people there. And it did us a world of good. We were filled up again. Um, so that's how I'm living my life. I'm going back to St. Patrick's. And whatever it is for, you know, everybody's being filled up differently. I'm spending more time with my nieces and nephews. Spending time with your three boys was amazing <laughs> for Bob and I. Thank you. It was so nice. We put this, I, can I tell we put this Christmas <laughs> present together with the boys for you and Matthew, and they loved doing that. Um, I would like to spend more time with my nieces and nephews and doing things that matter. So Jana discovered parts of yourself that perhaps were, were not accessible to you. Or I wasn't aware of. You, yeah, you, you I wasn't aware, aware of. And I what wasn't a gift. aware of. Yeah. And so, um, what a what a beautiful opportunity that we don't realize we have when, when we're willing to spend time with these, you know, older, wiser people who have, mm-hmm. who have so much to teach us, mm-hmm. and really to give us an opportunity to, to slow down and, discover. Well, thank you so much for, um, for all the times we've shared and mm. for being a great friend. I'm Thank so you. happy for everything that you've done and uh, how much you're giving and what you're doing for, for you now. Mm-hmm. It's a mm-hmm. turn. Mm-hmm. Thank you. As I review my life with you Since the days of old I wouldn't think of changing things For all If I had my life to live over, I'd do the same things again. I'd still want to roam near the place we called home, where my happiness never would end. I'd meet you when
when school days were over. Walk through the lanes that we knew. If I had my life to live over, I'd still fall in love with you. If I had my life to live over, I'd still fall in. Life is sometimes a string of waking up moments. That when um, when when we're when we become aware of them, maybe maybe they happen every day. These opportunities to to awaken to parts of us that we weren't aware before, in order to live the life that we're created for. So don't be afraid. And when things get really, really crazy and you absolutely think, oh, I don't have time, I can't take time now to get into that quiet place and who has time for, you know, I don't have 10 minutes to meditate or reflect or... That's the time when you leave everything and take those 10 minutes to quiet down and listen. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Wait, yeah.